Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. Well, it is uh, 11 o'clock or 23 hours into the 27th day of September, and we're sitting out side once again and i've made a decision that uh because we're not doing the uh, road vlogs anymore for about six months we are going to move to towards uh an observation vlog uh and this is what i do outside that's i'm out here till at least midnight and then uh, go inside and do uh transition to the uh back research desk and from there uh, i move on to the youtube stroll so this is a regular, this is a regular uh, until at least midnight, so it's at least another hour, uh, if not more. Uh, tonight's going to be a little short because uh, uh, not much is going on. I've uh, been able to sort of match up the sky with the, um, with the, what I see on the satellite. So that's been done. And there are no surprises for today. So it's primarily just sort of sitting here, seeing if anything pops up that the, uh, uh, wasn't necessarily seen on the satellite, so uh, that's how I make my uh, my observations. And basically, you have to you do this for an entire year because you have four seasons, right? So you you want to see how things uh, pan out season for season. You can look at the uh, the physics that go on with cloud interactions. Uh, there's also once you understand the physics uh, from below, you can go above and see what the physics are there and see how they match or don't match. There's a number of, of, of different things you can take a look at. And then from the other perspective, because you, you are waiting so long, and you're out here, let's see, I'm out here from 8, 9 o'clock until about midnight, about three hours, and this is the observation, standard observation uh, time. You have to do. You have to bring out other other projects to do while you're here. And, and one of the things I did find that was pretty interesting is I have to my right is one wave guide, and to the left is another wave guide. Guide so that as the train comes through, you can hear how the acoustics start to behave in terms of acoustical physics uh, with the two different wave guides. You can see how things work or how they don't work. And you know, typically everyone always talks about the Doppler effect. And the Doppler effect is, you know, when something's going by, if it's coming towards you, it has a higher frequency. Then as it's going away, it has a lower, it goes to a lower frequency. Right? Coming in and going away. Well, with a waveguide, that doesn't occur. What you get instead, instead of getting the, the, the frequency coming towards you, what you get is you get a... Uh, you get a pulse uh, and the last way I said it was pulse with mo pulse, pulse with mo uh, uh, modulation and what happens is in this pulse width you have other frequencies inside of it that are compressed and so the the the, the Doppler effect really isn't seen or heard uh, what you do get is you get an increase in sound to a uh, uh, to oh, to a maximum, and then a decrease in sound to a minimum. And I think I do have it recorded. It just depends. I, I don't know whether this has picked it up or not. And what I do have to do is I have to. I'll bring this in in terms of the one of the captionings here, when, sort of one of the uh, inline graphics that actually has sound. Now that I have picture in picture, I can bring this in, listen to the audio, and then just sort of comment on the audio as it comes in so i may have to uh, sort of do this in the back room uh and, and it's sort of in the uh, media room uh, research desk uh as things sort of uh as i figure out how to get things done uh so this will come become the observation vlog and because the observation vlog uh will replace the road vlog initially it's going to talk about the observations up here but at the same time because I am listening to Lionel LeBron here, this is when I listen to Lionel, is I'm out here, I've got nothing else to do, so I've already done an hour's worth of Lionel. I've listened to him for an hour, then I went through uh, my different news sources and different places I get information from. I went through all of that, uh, and now it's time to sort of, you know, 
have the conversation here uh, with you guys. And this is what I would call the verbal essay after I've done all that work. And so I can bring in the stuff I'm look, looking at with Lionel LeBron just the way I did uh, on the road vlog. And so Lionel LeBron brings in a large chunk, and this segment here is going to be going to be listed as part of the road vlog. Uh, it will be about uh, 20 minutes in length. I'll do two 10 minutes, and this will become part of the uh, part of the road vlog. And this will announce that the road vlog is switching to the observation vlog uh, for the next six months, anyways, until the new scooter comes in. And I set up my uh, repair shop for the old scooter so I can learn how to do scooter and uh, electrical uh, electric vehicle uh, repair. Because a lot of times the, the situation that's just right now. Most people are doing uh, gas and auto. They're doing a gas repair. They're not doing electrical. And electrical requires a, a, a bit of a different setup. And so it's not going to be exactly the same. So I do have to get that done. Uh, it just what happens. There's so much that has to get done. You get very tired and you just really want to sleep all day long. Anyways, uh, this is somewhat of the introduction here. And this is sort of how we're going to end up with our, uh, with our, uh, well, 20 minutes to a half hour in the observation block. This part that's going to be previous, this will be part of both the uh, road, road vlog and our life as cyborg. I think it's going to be the two things here. They're going to be sort of interconnected. And so you'll see this part twice. So it is now, uh, 23 hours and six minutes into the 27th day of September 2021, and we are out doing observation. The observation vlog, which is now, is going to, is, as I said before in the previous segment, is going to replace the road vlog. So let's begin our observation. Let's begin our vlog. We do have a train coming in. The right uh, waveguide has just triggered. And the sounds are coming in from there. So I'm assuming this this is going to be a westbound train. The right waveguide is towards the east. The left waveguide is towards the west. If it's going to be westbound train, it comes in from the left uh, waveguide first. That's what activates and then goes through to the right. If it's coming from the east and going west, it, it, the right uh, waveguide activates and then goes through. So it goes right, left. When it's going westbound, it's going eastbound. It's going from the left to the right in terms of the waveguide wave guide activation. Right now we've had the first pulse. And you'll see that we'll die down again. We've had the first pulse indication that just activated the uh, right waveguide. So it's going to take a while to activate and sort of come here. Let's see if I've got this adjusted correctly. But anyways, this gives us a chance to sort of talk about Lionel and bring the road vlog in. We've been talking about Gnosis. And he's begun to realize that the deep state doesn't always know what it's doing, that it's not one person. Uh, they don't think along the same lines. But what he hasn't brought into it yet in terms of his discussion, I think he's still trying to wrap his mind around it, uh, is the level of gnosis that goes on within the deep state. Now, we talk a lot about the deep state because they, they're they somewhat mysterious. They're not too difficult to figure out. Uh, if you're a good researcher, you can sort of figure them out. You can sort of see how they're thinking or what they're thinking about. Uh, this is typically not for what I would call the weekend warrior or the conspiracy theorist. And the conspiracy theorist exists on both the left and the right now. Typically, everyone knows the conspiracy theorists is typically the person being on the right. They're typically what they call a trumper. But the, those on the left are equally as much a conspiracy theorist because they particularly believe in conspiracies and theories and ideas that are presented from the media. And their fundamental source are these newspapers that they consider to be, or, or, or magazines, that they consider to be reputable. These are the reputable magazines. Oh, I read in this article, I... I read the New Yorker, and they had this in here, and they're reputable. They're 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 very good. They're very educated. 
uh, or they read the New York Times and they're against the same thing. No one will ever pull an argument out of something like the Sun, which, ironically enough, uh, those are those are the the, the uh, uh, sort of the newspapers and the and the articles uh, for guys. It's, it's basically a guys' newspaper because they have the uh, uh, Sunshine Girl in there, and she, typically it's uh, it's the sort of called the discussion of assets, of female assets, and <laughs> so this is this is typically aimed towards guys. Uh, I'm pretty sure girls have their own sort of sense where they have uh, uh, magazines like Vanity Fair and their fashion magazines. This is where a large chunk of they uh, of the so-called the feminine side of of, of news gets they, they get their stuff from there in terms of the feminine side. It's again. Articles are written for them, aimed towards them. They're shaped, uh, and with, if, you, if you did a good research background, a background research on Edward Bernays, you would understand that these so-called reporters aren't reporters. They're PR people. They've been put in there uh, from by these PR firms for a long time. So news isn't really news; it's actually PR. It really just depends on how you spin it. But again, if, if, if this is something you don't understand, you haven't done the background research, then you're not going to understand this. And then people will say, well, I'm, I'm smart enough. I know I, I can use my common sense. But later on, you hear them, and they've been watching the sort of the mainstream media. They've been watching their, their, their sort of their take on things. And as I use, I use a source or RT or I recommend a source, but I don't rec recommend it as the primary and only source. When I say primary source, that means you have other sources to back it up. And it, I, I, primary does not mean only. <laughs> you know, it's not your only source. You should be going to other places. See other 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 uh, papers, including opposition papers, to see how they uh, th they sort of stack up. What are they talking about? What are they saying? Where is their mind at? I mean, th th this has to be done. I mean, because I do take a look at one of the papers and look. Well, okay, RT is. Not particularly right. It's not a Republican thing. It, it, it's by the way, many associate with Republican because they associate with Donald Trump. Well, he's a Russian spy. But if you read the articles on RT, you'll start seeing that a large chunk of the people on RT are solidly on the left. These are not Bernie. They're not Biden people, but they are Bernie Sanders. They would call they call them the Bernie Sanders Democrat are basically people who are RT. This is where RT is coming from. So you can read articles about and by Noam, Ch Noam Chomsky. You can see uh, the presentations by uh, Edward Snowden. And there's, there's a number of different people you can sort of, that are notable that you could sort of find on the left spectrum uh, that are not specifically within the Democratic Party, sort of the what we call the mainstream, which is more or less the Biden Pelosi crowd. Uh, even Chuck Schumer's in there, but even though they have their own differences, they have their own teams, they have their own people. You do have, and say within within every group, you have groupings of different people. Uh, so what happens? Is you have the AOC crowd. Uh, the AOC is supposed to be the replacement for Bernie Sanders, because Bernie Sanders has kind of uh, swept out the sea. But so now in comes AOC. AOC is now backed up by Greta Greta Thun, uh, Thunberg. Thunberg. Uh, I'm um, tripping over my uh, my words was is Thunberg. Uh, she's back in the news again. But then again, you know, once you're in the news, once you once you've got the sort of we'll call the influencer uh, status, you want to keep it, and that means you need to get back get yourself back into uh, the limelight. And typically, what you do it, you do what you did before. If you do it once and it makes you, gets you into the headlines, then that's what you do again. But at some point in time, you start becoming a meme or a character of yourself because you're simply you're not doing anything original. You're simply mimicking what you did before in order to get attention. And the thing is, this is what what you see. I mean, the argument I see on 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 Instagram, uh, there are two groups of Inuits or uh, two groups of of, of indigenous people are fighting. One on the west uh, on on the west coast, and one uh, in uh, none of it. And one of none of it is saying that we're starving here. We don't have enough food. Why are our prices so? You know, the government's starving us to death. You know, they're, they're, they're destroying us. But the other one is coming out again. These are both ads. 
being promoted by uh, 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 Trudeau, the Canadian government, because that you can see their sponsorship there. The other one talking about how he is he is called two spirited, and this means that he is transgender. The promotion of transgender. So this is a guy who sounds like a woman who but has a beard. So long hair, thin line, you know, thin line beard, not a full beard, uh, but a thin line beard, just you know, sort of highlighting the the, the uh, chin and cheekbones, and that's about it. It's a very very thin beard, and he calls himself two spirited. This is their this is the term, the uh, the Native American term for, uh, uh, or the indigenous term for, and I, should, I need to say Native American more or more talking about the the. Uh, original peoples of the Americas uh, in terms of the continent uh, rather than saying indigenous because there's a lot of different types of indigenous people. And what the West has done to the indigenous crowd during during their colonial, that colonialization was they abused people all over the world. It's not the experience of the, the sort of uh, North American and even the South American indigenous is not unique to them alone. It's not sort of isolated. And this is the same thing with, with, you know, talk about black lives and black lives matter. The experience of slavery is not unique. to It's not a black or white issue because slavery has been all over the place. To, uh, to highlight this point, all you have to do is go back into early history, uh, in, in, well, recent history, uh, in the 1800s, and see what the uh, the British did to the, um, to the Irish. <laughs> you know, there's white on white there. There's... Uh, but the, the, the but the but the but the Irish Catholic were the slaves of the Protestants. But ironically enough, in terms of the the Gnosis, in terms of the, the 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 their their religion, the reason why they ended up becoming the slaves of the Protestants is because initially they were slaves of the of the of the Vatican. The Vatican is a in terms of its its its, its setup and the way it's structured in terms of its. Belief in God and the belief in, in, in called what it calls Christianity, even though it isn't, it's a slave. It's a form of slavery. the The ultimate slave master in Europe is the Pope. The Pope is about a thousand A.D. began to call himself the Vicar of Christ. There was a fundamental shift. Between 800 and 1000 AD, there was a fundamental shift in Christianity centered around the papacy. And the papacy, uh, and this was the invasion of, of the Roman Empire by Gaul, the Galatians. These were the barbarians. Uh, so you had, these were the the Frankish kings. Uh, one may, you may know or have heard of is Charlemagne. Uh, and he was one of the Frankish kings. Uh, the Franks were were of Gaul. They're more associated with uh, the Germans than the. But even then, there was no Germany back then. No one was saying Germany. Uh, and they'll focus on that. But the, the Franks were basically were, were basically the ones who became the French. This is where the French, the France, came from because they were the Franks. Uh, and so you had a sort of a conquering of the western part of the Roman Empire, which at that time was Christian. But it was an eastern Christian, not a western Christian. And what the what the Frankish kings did was set up a western Christianity. This was the beginning of white Christianity. And they believed in the, sen the sense of white power. This is, And so this is some of the historical background. And they believed in this sort of white power that they that that the pope was god on earth that the you know christ was crucified he left us there was the ascension and now we needed someone to replace christ on earth that became the pope they call him the vicar of christ well ironically enough you can go further into the name there and now oh yeah vicar of christ he's the person who's vicarious he lives as christ he he's the replacement for christ that's the latin term is vicar or vic like or 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 vicarious, and what you do is you go into the Greek and understand the meaning of "take the place of." Who is going to take the place of? Well, of is tis. 
and to take the place of, to remove that place and put it elsewhere or put something else in its place, it's antis. And it's initially two words, but you run it together and you get anti. Anti is to take the place of. That's the initial meaning of anti. That it takes the place of something. So what happens, while in Greek they call him the vicar of Christ, I mean, in Latin they call him the vicar of Christ, and that's his official title. In Greek, it's antichrist. So here's a guy who stands up and says, I'm the head of the church, I'm God on earth, oh, by the way, I'm the antichrist. Of course, this doesn't go over too well. So, well, I'm not going to worship the antichrist. And he says, you don't have a choice. And this is where they, the Catholics get on their horses, and they start a crusade across Europe, and they destroy every church that is not properly within uh, within the Catholic sphere. They, they converted everybody uh, at the point of a sword to Roman Catholicism. This was the Battle of Hastings in 1066. This is when the, this is how you have the divisions that you have between Scotland and Ireland. The, the you know the, the Roman Catholic the Roman Catholic Protestant uh, uh, argument occurs at this particular point in time because in order to, to, to turn England uh, into a proper Catholic environment. What you have to do is you have they, what they did is they went in and killed every monk, nun, and priest. They basically any congregation who did not want to want to convert to Roman Catholicism. What they did is as because a lot of them in their protests went to church. They, they they set the church up and they began their prayers. They began their services. Uh, and I this is the group that I belong to the the Eastern Christian group uh, that which is fundamentally different from the West. And in the East, you don't fight back. You, 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 this is the martyrs who are go to the grave peaceful. This is, this is what uh, Gandhi had picked up. Gandhi had picked up the Eastern Christian ethic of, of being peaceful. The, the called the passive resistance. This is all Christian. This is all early Christian. The Western Christian developed a, a war mentality that everything was about war. That they conquered things. These were the Crusaders. These were the conquistadors. These were. It was in their name. Conquest was in the name of the various different people who did the invading. And it was done in, in, in a holy manner that these the ones who led were these warrior monks. This is where the Knights Templar come from. This is where the Knights, the Knights Hospitalers come from. Uh, the Teutonic Knights come from here. These are the origins of what we call the Masonic Lodge. So, you know, so oh, Gnosticism has no play in the world today. Well, yes, it does. You ever seen St. John's Ambulance? Well, the Knights of the Cross, the, you know, the, the, the Knights of Malta, the royalty, the royalty that, that Europe has set up under the papacy is still there today. This is the whole thing with the crown of the, with, with the House of Windsor. And the, the royals are still battling it out. They're still battling it out for dominancy. They are a major portion of the deep state, but the, the royal families have never gone along because it's always about conquest. It's always about maintaining that power. So there's always a degree of division between the different powers that are that form the deep state. But the thing is, they're the ones who also created, they all through the papacy, they're the ones who created slavery. So slavery is around today because of the papacy. But the papacy was Western Christian that, that produced this. It wasn't the Eastern Christianity. But again, this is completely lost today. So the argument goes back, oh, you're a Christian, you're, you're a racist, you're a this, you're a that. Well, wait a minute, which Christianity are you talking about? West or East? And today, most of the Eastern churches that look Eastern have knelt and have sort of capitulated and joined, joined the West. The only difference now is they look like they're Eastern. They look, well, basically, they have the wolves in sheep's clothing. They look like they're something that they're not. You go to a Greek Orthodox church, they're not Orthodox. They're Catholic. They just simply look Orthodox so that the people don't know the difference don't care about the difference, and they follow along with what everybody else is doing. They, oh, yes, we're Orthodox. Well, no, you're not. Why? Because you joined with the papacy. You're no longer Orthodox. You're Catholic. And but the thing is, again, this argument is completely lost. You bring this out with, just like, like, like COVID or anything else, again, it's completely lost, unless people have some sense of their history, and they don't. The average person's really, person really doesn't go deep into their history. The person who goes deep into history, the person who goes deep into research, these people are very far 
they're they're there are not many of them. They're far, uh, far, you know, I'm trying to think of the phrase and how to say it. Far and few between. And the thing is, they, they, there's a tendency once you know something or, or, or have a belief in something that you continuously fall back to it. You don't use observation, particularly if something's outside your observation or more particularly outside your experience. You will typically, you'll tend to, yeah, it's tripping over my words again. You'll tend to fall back into theories and ideas that you understood before. Like the many priests who have studied theology will simply dismiss animals as, well, mechanical, like machines. It's not until you sit out with these animals, and this is what I the experience I had when I was doing my observational work up north, my other my other research desk. Uh, I was waiting for delivery, so uh, there was a uh, the farmer who runs who uh, maintains the land for us has has a had a herd of sheep, still does, but much smaller now. And so he asked me when I go to do this stuff that, that I close the gate behind me, and I sit out on the driveway on the road uh, on the road itself, but behind in my driveway uh, leading to the road. Uh, and so I close the, close the gate behind me and. Uh, lo and behold, all these sheep would come behind me and just turned around and see they're all munching and and having a good time eating. And because you you don't hear, you, and then I'll explain this uh, as we go along. Animals have moods and they can express their moods. They can tell you when they're happy, when they're sad, all these different things. It just depends on where your focus is. So my focus is I wasn't looking at them, but I was hearing them. I could hear them. Just the way doing that, we're doing observational exercise. But, but observational exercise is primarily uh, um, audio right now. There is no visual because really uh, there's not much I expect to see. So occasionally I look up, I sort of see what's going on with the, with the, with the background sky. I also have to look around and look for skunks. <laughs> but anyways, the sheep were behind me, and you hear them. You can actually hear them chewing the grass, pulling the grass up and chewing it. Then all of a sudden you, you hear a, 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 sort of like a, a bar and two sheep go off to my right, and which is away from their home, which is to my left. So my their home is to the le- is to the left, and I'm sitting out to the road out, out to the road like the way I'm facing now, and, and there's also to the right. So they're in a field behind me, kind of close to the gate because they always come up. They, they always the animals always want to know who you are. They don't like to sit sit there and just say okay that's it. They want to know who you are. Now as they begin to learn who I am, uh, two go off to the right to my right, and there was something walking around. I can't see anything right now. And they're gone for a bit, and then they come back. And an argument starts, and the two that have gone out to the right are now trying to convince the rest of the herd to go to the right. And so a fight starts, and you can see them back and bumping each other, and you can hear them fighting with each other. A third group forms, so we'll give two groups fighting with each other. One that, one that go, wants to go to the right, and, and another group that wants to stay there, they're both fighting with each other. A third group forms who is tired of the whole thing and wants to go home. They're now scared. You can tell they're scared. They want to go home. So they start moving off to the left, and so you have groups of sheep that want to go to the left, groups of sheep that, that want to stay, and a group of sheep that want to go to the right. And this tussle, tussle goes on for about a half hour, 45 minutes, as they start fighting with each other. Eventually, at some point in time, they all end up going off to the right. And what I hear in the woods is I hear in the woods as they go further off into the woods. I hear them stepping onto a rock and then over a fence. You can hear you can hear their hooves doing this. And what had happened is that the one of the two sheep that had initially gone out uh, had found a way to hop the fence because there was a rock there. They figured out how to get onto the rock and then over the. F- and I, I heard them doing that. I heard I couldn't figure out the way what they initially were doing over there because I hear them you know hopping onto a rock, hopping over and, and into the over the fence and onto the ground below, and then coming back again. 
They did this several times before they came back and started the fight. Eventually, the group who wanted to go home eventually came over and went. they went to the right, and you hit them one by one, going onto the rock, over the rock, over the fence, and onto the other side. Then once they were all done like that, they all went up the road uh, to uh, what, what I now know as the neighbor's property, where they have pastures that they like. The, the farmer came by and asked me, what happened? I said, well, they all decided to go off to the uh, right, and uh, they found a rock that they can get onto and hop the fence. It's a lot like, if you want to go take a look and understand what, the way sheep behave, there's a cartoon called Shaun the Sheep. Watch that cartoon because they're a lot like that. They have personalities. They have thoughts and ideas. And I had nothing to do with that. I was just sort of sitting listening to it. This was the, was the observation. And it was really quite amazing to see how the, these animals interacted. But unless this is, not, unless this is part of your, your understanding, then you'll think that animals, animals are kind of mindless, that there's nothing there. And, and so the question is, is that what, well, now what, what else is there? What else don't we know? And the amount that we don't know is, is unbelievable. But a person who is, has other experiences will tend to go back to the experiences that they know rather than hearing and understanding the experience that they don't know. You can explain it to me. I explained it to a lot of people. But unless they heard it themselves, unless you hear it and, and see this for yourself, you don't know. It's outside your experience. And this is the problem that Lionel has is that there are a lot of things that are going on in the world today that are simply and fundamentally outside of experience. This is the same thing with, with most of your conspiracy theorists on the left hand and right side. Sounds like we got geese going by. And they argue back and forth, but the thing is, in many cases, they don't see the entire picture. And this is what causes the conflict between uh, the various different groups of conspiracy theorists, left and right. Anyways, that's it for tonight, and um, I will see you uh, tomorrow night for the same thing. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life.